Hello, it's Steve here again from the Studio One Soapbox. And today's video, I want to take a look at a feature that a lot of people don't even realize is there and a lot of people aren't taking advantage of. And that is the pool. Uh, now to access the pool, you can simply go down to the bottom right hand corner, click browse and scroll along to the pool tab and click on that and open it. Or you can simply hit F10 on your keyboard and get straight into the pool. Now, what exactly is this mysterious pool? Simply put, everything in Studio One that you do, should you record some MIDI, record some audio, drag in some audio files, uh, edit those files, add plugins, add processing to those, everything that is done in the Arranger view in Studio One, a record of it is kept in the pool. Now you say to yourself, what use is that to me? Why, why would I be interested in that? Well, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of this um, uh, advanced thing that we happen to have here and how we could use it in everyday uh, editing and mixing. Um, so firstly, what we have here is Easy Drummer 2, which I have transformed the audio to save my CPU. And we have a little guitar track playing back through, if I just get it opened here, a TH2 guitar simulator. So let me play a little bit of that and then we'll discuss this a bit further. Okay, so as you can hear, just a simple uh, drum track with a clean uh, sounding guitar. Now, say for instance, um, that we were struggling with our CPU with lots of tracks here, just imagine, and our CPU is dancing off the scale. And so we need to cut back on a few tracks. So obviously in uh, Studio One, if we right click, we can go down, transform to rendered audio, which will transform the uh, guitar simulator and the audio, mix them together and take that guitar simulator out of the equation and save our CPU. So let's click on this. So as you can see, we've transformed the audio, we've got rid of the guitar simulator night, saves even more CPU, and if we look over here in the pool, what we have is, that is the original DI track, just a copy of it, and here we have a little uh, clip with uh, another audio track, and if we open this up, here we can find this is the original track, when we go down to the bottom we can play it back, there you go. That's just the DI straight through my little audio interface just using the onboard preamp. Okay. And up above is our rendered audio track with that same signal being played back through TH2 Guitar Simulator. Let's have a listen to that. So as you can hear, that's a louder. It's being played back through the guitar simulator and taking advantage of the sound that we got through that. Um, so you say to yourself, How, what on earth would this be of any use to me for? Well, say for instance, um, in a last video, um, I had been talking about recording DI tracks. This here, in other ways, uh, saves you from recording a DI track because down below, as I said, we have the original signal, which the little clipboard means there's original signals cap, the original processing is cap, and the top one is uh, where you are now. For instance, it's like present, up to date, the, all the processing, everything you've done to date is now in the top. Below, when we open them up, is all the other process files. So. For instance here, what I could do is, I can simply drag across our DI track and I could blend that into the original. Um, let's just listen to that. There you go, there's the DI track, no processing. And there is the TH2 guitar track. 
Now that's just one example of what could be done. Uh, also, as you can see in the Easy Drummer track, which I've also rendered the audio, um, if we open that up beside the little clip, we can see there is the original MIDI track. So, say for instance, um, we had it in Easy Drummer, we hated the sound of it, we wanted to go for something maybe uh, more advanced, say for Addicted Drums 2, um, we could load up Addicted Drums, Drag that original MIDI across. Let's see if I can just get that out of the road so you can see better. And there you go. There's the original MIDI track. And now that we could load this into Addictive Drums and have it play the MIDI back. So as you can see, it's quite a powerful feature. And um, there's quite a lot of things can be done here. Now, now just for more of an example, say for instance, uh, we wanted to process our original guitar track. Let me see, let me get rid of this one here. Uh, so we don't get confused, get rid of that as well. And we're back to that, right. So say I wanted to do a little bit more processing to this rhythm guitar. Um, let's go to Presonus. Um, say we want to do a bit of EQing to the guitar. We'll open up the wonderful Pro EQ. Um, I'll roll off some of those around, say, 95. Uh, maybe I will grab, um, say, 350. Take a bit out there. Higher the cue. Sorry about this, just for an example. Um, say we went to 4. And we give a little boost there. Okay, so say we did that. Let's play that back. Original. Okay. Okay. So we're still not happy with that. And we add a little... Mm, let's see. What about we add a little flanger to that? And let's see what we have here. Guitar. Mm, feels soft. That'll do lovely. Uh, let's play that back. Okay. Now, say we were really happy with that sound and we thought to ourselves, brilliant, let's render that because again, uh, maybe we're running out of CPU if you've got a lower spec computer. Um, just render that again. Transform to rendered audio. Yes, please. Now, look what's happened over here in the pool. We have another track that is showing up with a number two. So, in our first track, that is our original DI. Up above is a track through TH2 and rendered. Now we have entered our second phase. As you can see here, so in our little number two, meaning we've done something else. And what we have here is the original TH2 and up above is our flange. So let's just prove that to you. Uh, let's play this back. There you go. That's a guitar through TH2. Okay. And then up above is the guitar where we have rendered the EQ and the flanger. Let's listen to that. So, as you can see, this is a very powerful feature. A lot of people don't make use of it whatsoever, but it can really help with uh, speed as regards to your mixing. And yes, I know what you're saying. Say, for instance, uh, we had went this far uh, and we didn't have the pool open. Let me get rid of that. And we're going, oh, I've, I've messed with this so much and I've rendered it a couple of times and I can't even remember what processing I'd done on it. Oh, I wish I could just get back to my original track and start over because I've made such a mess of this. Well, you know, if we just go into our pool again and we say to ourselves, 
um, I'm happy with the TH2. We could simply drag that over. Or we want to go all the way back. We could drag our guitar rhythm. And we could get rid of that track. Remove track or shift and T. And here we go. We can get right back to our original DI track. There it is. And we can start over again from scratch. No need to re-record anything. No need to get the musicians back and see if you can get them to come up with some better maybe or whatever it is you're after. Um, one thing I would say is that obviously the more you do this in the pool, um, the more confused it might get. Because as you can see, instead of the pool uh, changing name, it just adds a number two. But thankfully, Personas, in their wonderful wisdom, has allowed us a way to rename the file. So if you remember, in this one, the top file, that was our TH2 track. Um, and this one here, number two, we can rename that. As you remember, that was our EQ and flange. And so you can keep track of, you know, what each um, element is here in the pool. Might be a bit lengthy, but as you can see, you can rename these in seconds. You can also keep a writing pad handy and just jot down every time you had processed something uh, so that you can keep track of what's what in the pool. Or if you're really lost, simply, like say for instance, I'm clicking that and going, what is that again? Just come down here and play it. Can't really remember. Ah, yes, that's the EQ and the flash. So as you can see, the pool is a very powerful feature and it really will help you with your mixing because everything that you've done, anything you process, anything you drag in, whether it be MIDI, audio, or an outside um, wave file, um, everything is kept track of here in the pool. So please don't be afraid, no pun intended, but do dive into the pool. It's an excellent feature and you can certainly help recover things far quicker. Of course, yes, um, we could do edit, go to our history, go through these and go back that way. Um, we could also just keep control Z, control Z, control Z. But as you can see, this is far quicker. You know, if I just want to get that original file back, there it is there. Just drag it over. Boom, we're back to the start. And I can start processing again if I've severely messed the file up. Okay, so I hope you will make use of this feature. Do dive into it. Get in there and happy mixing. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you.